Like it's about bronchiectasis. Why is bronchiectasis? Well, the literal meaning of the word means stretching of the bronchi. Now, the definition that we use is that it's an irreversible dilatation of the airways associated with chronic inflammation and infection. This infection, inflammation cycles, causes damage to the bronchi, <coughs> leading to changes in structure and the components of the bronchi walls. Now, many diseases can cause the condition, but the key thing to know is that it's caused by gradual um, bouts of inflammation over and over and over again. Now, why is dilatation of the bronchi such a bad thing? Well, we know that the lung is a very efficient structure and this dilatation affects the cilia, which means mucus cannot um, be cleared out of the lungs and affects the muscle, um, leading to changes in structure and elastic tissue, leading to changes in structure and recoil, for example. Now, the key thing to note is that impaired mucus clearance. When there is stasis of mucus, you are bound to get an infection. Now, um, Cole's hypothesis puts into puts it puts it in a very nice way. So, initially, you have an insult causing lung damage. This can be anything. For example, a pneumonia can cause lung damage, and this disrupts mucociliary clearance, causing airflow obstruction. Now, the a mucus is not moving and this results in infection developing and inflammation which causes further lung damage and it's a vicious cycle. So here is a image just showing the changes you get in bronchiectasis. As you can see there's a loss of cilia, increased mucus and destruction of the wall. Now what are the causes of bronchiectasis? Well there are many, many causes, though in about 35% of patients, no primary cause can be identified. Minor a minority of cases are congenital, and these are due to malformations of the bronchial structures. Um, again, with Cole's hypothesis, chronic infections can cause the damage, but often, especially in childhood, if a child develops a severe pneumonia, for example, it can also result in bronchiectasis. Now, as for the causes, here are the causes. So you can have it um, due to infection, TB, pneumonia, pertussis, uh, defective clearance, cystic fibrosis. This is the most common cause in adults and children. And toxic inhalation, obstruction, asthma, COPD. So there are several different causes of bronchiectasis. How does this present? Well, patients often present with a chronic productive cough. A thing to notice here is that there's copious sputum production. If a patient is in a ward, you see them in a ward in exams and they have lots of sputum pots next to them and um, you know it's bronchiectasis because of the vast quantities of mucus that is um, sputum that is produced, sorry. But in the rare instance there is also a dry variant and that occurs in TB and that produces very little sputum. So severe bronchiectasis in the long term can result in clubbing and hemoptysis does occur in about half of patients. In exacerbations, patients can develop chest pain, fevers, shortness of breath and fatigue is also present. Now diagnosis, how exactly do we diagnose this? Well, in the past, this was diagnosed via the sputum production, how much sputum was produced. But now it's um, um, diagnosed via CT of the chest. There are several classifications of um, bronchiectasis. I'm just going to have a few images to show. So let me move on to this one. This is cystic classification. As you can see, the cysts are clearly visible in the left lower lobe of the CT. Now, if you move on to the next one, this is bronchiectasis, bronchiectasis seen in a boy, a 14 year old boy with cystic fibrosis, again, the most common cause of bronchiectasis. And here we go. Here's cylindrical bronchiectasis. As you can see here, it's quite a bit different from the cystic. Um, cystic bronchiectasis. Now manage. How do we manage bronchiectasis? Well, first of all, we treat the underlying condition, whatever it may be. And um, a respiratory physiotherapist should get involved with the patient. They have specialized techniques which are really effective and they work uh, as an adjunct to drug therapy. Now, in ex acute exacerbations, we use steroids and antibiotics, notably macrolides, to fight against pseudomonas. And um, again, specialist advice should be taken in this circumstance. Uh, one thing to know is that um, patients who suffer from three or more exacerbations per year should be provided with prophylactic antibiotic therapy. Okay, and that's a summary of bronchiectasis. If you have any questions, please leave them below.